If you're looking to grow some oyster mushrooms or even just buy some oyster mushrooms to eat, but you can't decide on what type, then this video is for you. There are lots of different choices out there and each oyster mushroom kind of has its own different characteristics. So we're gonna go over a bunch of different types of oyster mushrooms so you can decide what kind you either wanna grow or just buy and cook and enjoy at home. Oyster mushrooms are a common name for a whole genus of mushrooms and that genus is Pleurotus. The most common type of oyster mushroom being Pleurotus ostriatus. Like I said, there's lots of different kinds and lots of different species. The genus name Pleurotus literally means side ear and it kind of explains the way that oyster mushrooms grow laterally out of the substrate for the most part. But they'll also often grow in nice big beautiful clusters of overlapping fruiting bodies. Pleurotus mushrooms or oyster mushrooms are found growing all over the world from tropical climates to temperate climates and anywhere in between and honestly if there ever was a mushroom found growing in space it would likely be the oyster mushroom just because they are super tenacious, super prolific and they grow everywhere. They typically grow on hardwood so in the wild you're going to find them on dead or dying hardwood logs but oyster mushrooms like I said are super tenacious. They can grow on coffee, on banana leaves, on paper, I've even seen them growing on like toilet paper, newspapers or books or furniture uh, even out of people's you know floorboards so oyster mushrooms will grow on basically any kind of organic material or organic substrate even though the most common one is hardwood and the most common one cultivated is something like straw or hardwood sawdust so let's go over the most popular types first up is the yellow oyster also known as Pleurotus citrinopiliatus which is a really fun name to say this mushroom is also sometimes called the golden oyster mushroom yellow oyster is truly wonderfully bright and vividly yellow I mean that's obviously why it gets its name and it's actually a super fast growing mushroom sometimes you can be harvesting this mushroom as early as two weeks after colonizing a substrate Although yellow oyster mushrooms are beautiful, they are quite delicate. So they'll grow in these beautiful yellow bouquets of mushrooms, but they are quite delicate and the caps are really thin. So they don't really have a long shelf life at all, which is why you're pretty unlikely to find them at the supermarket. If you really want to enjoy yellow oyster mushrooms, you either need to find them at the farmer's market or you need to just kind of grow them yourself. Surprisingly, actually, this is one oyster mushroom that you might be super likely to find in the wild, depending on where you live. And if this was 20 years ago, uh, yellow oyster mushrooms wouldn't be found anywhere in the US. They were only found in Japan and parts of Russia and parts of China. But more recently, they're showing up everywhere. And um, what people think is happening is that since these mushrooms, the popularity of cultivating these mushrooms um, is becoming so much more common, uh, they've kind of escaped the farm and are kind of out competing a lot of other decomposers. And some people are even wanting to classify yellow oyster mushrooms as a invasive species. And actually there's a mycologist, Andrea Bruce, who's doing some kind of cool research on this. So if you want to go check that out and learn about yellow oyster mushrooms and whether or not they're becoming an invasive species, be sure to check that link in the description below. One more thing I'll mention about uh, yellow oyster mushrooms is they do have a very distinct citrusy smell, which is super unique. They don't smell anything like any other oyster mushrooms. And that's probably why they get that name Citrino pileatus or Pleurotus Citrino pileatus is because they do have that nice, distinct citrusy smell. So it's really nice. So again, if you can find yellow oyster mushrooms, either by finding it as an invasive species or picking it up at your local farmer's market or even growing it yourself, it's definitely worth trying. Next up is pink oysters. And again, this is always super surprising the first time anybody sees these mushrooms because they really are like wonderfully and amazingly pink. They're bright and vividly pink and they're a real head turner at the farmer's market or wherever you might see these things growing. Pink oyster mushrooms will grow in these overlapping floral bouquets and they almost look like, you know, a bouquet of flowers, but they're mushrooms, which is super cool. Of course, I can't talk about pink oysters without showing off my pink oyster mushroom blanket. Isn't that cool? Thanks, mom. Now, there are a few different species of pink oyster mushrooms like Pleurotus jamor, I don't know if I'm saying that right, and Pleurotus salmon. Um, and I've grown them both, and to tell you the truth, I don't really notice too much of a difference uh, between the two of them. Apparently, one of them is more susceptible to colder weather than the other, but in my experience, I find that uh, pink oyster mushrooms, being a warm weather mushroom, they're all susceptible to colder weather. So they're a great species to kind of grow throughout the summer, but they're also a bit of a pain because if you want to save grain spots, 
spawn or if you want to save cultures of pink oyster mycelium, they will die pretty quickly if you put them in the fridge. So you need to kind of keep them separate from your other cultures. But other than that, pink oyster mushrooms are super easy to grow. Uh, even though they're you know delicate and beautiful, they're like super tenacious and they will kind of grow throughout anything. They have no problem ripping through any kind of substrate and eventually fruiting. So they're super hardy and they're super easy mushroom for beginners to grow at home if you want to give your hand a shot at trying to grow oyster mushrooms. The one other thing about pink oyster mushrooms, which is almost kind of an issue with all oyster mushrooms, is that they have a super short shelf life. So again, this is a reason why you're not going to typically find them at your you know, main supermarket grocery store. It's because they don't last very long on the shelf. And even if you grow them at home, after a couple days in the fridge, they start to smell urinaceous, which is not a very good smell. They're really best if they're enjoyed fresh. Now, probably one of the most wonderful things about pink oyster mushrooms is that you can make pink oyster mushroom bacon. And you basically do this by just taking the pink oyster mushrooms, chopping them up, and then frying them in a pan with some you know, oil or butter and some salt and some paprika. And I know what you're saying. You're saying, Tony, if you fry any kind of mushroom up with paprika and salt, it's gonna taste like bacon. But there's something very special about pink oyster mushrooms. I don't know exactly what it is, but when you cook them this way, they really do taste like bacon or bacon bits, and it's totally awesome, and you should try it. Now, making your way down the mushroom rainbow, I wanna tell you about one of my personal favorite mushrooms to grow at home ever, the blue oyster mushroom. And if you've seen our video on how to grow mushrooms in a five gallon bucket, then you've seen blue oyster mushrooms. Those were blue oyster variety, Pleurotus ostriatus variation columbinus. So I don't know if I'm saying that right again, but Pleurotus columbinus. Latin names are kind of hard. I don't know, I always have trouble with them, but we're just gonna call it the blue oyster mushroom. And this is an awesome mushroom. Now, different from the first two that I mentioned, blue oyster is actually a cold weather mushroom. So it does well in colder climates. And that's probably why it does so well up here uh, in Canada when I'm growing it outside. Uh, it, is easy to grow in the spring. And again, it's super fast growing and it produces big, beautiful, huge fruits of blue oyster mushrooms. Now, blue oyster mushrooms are actually super blue when they first start out. So when they're just starting to pin, they have a really dark, deep blue color. But as they grow older, it's like that color kind of spreads out. So as they grow into huge fruits, they kind of turn more into a gray mushroom or, you know, a very, very pale blue. But when they're young, they really are super dark blue, which is really cool. Um, but the other thing about blue oyster mushrooms is out of all of the mushrooms, all of the oyster mushrooms, they are the most sensitive in my experience to uh, the fresh air requirement. So oyster mushrooms, if they don't get enough fresh air, they're gonna form these really long kind of skinny stems and these tiny little caps. But blue oyster mushrooms seem to be the worst for this. They're super, super hungry for that fresh air. So if you're trying to grow them inside, even if you have a tent with a nice fan and everything, a lot of the times you're not gonna get those nice caps that you'd expect with oyster mushrooms. But that's what makes them, in my opinion, such a great candidate to grow outside where they can get enough fresh air and then they're gonna look totally different. You're gonna get nice, big, beautiful caps and you don't have to worry about getting those scrawny kind of little puny headed mushrooms that you sometimes get when you're trying to grow indoors. Because, you know, with oyster mushrooms, it's the cap that is most delicious and that you can use in cooking, whereas the stem can be kind of chewy and isn't really the best. So if you grow them inside, it might be a little difficult, but they are a great candidate for growing outside if you live in a more temperate climate. So now we move on from the mushroom rainbow and go to the king or king oyster mushrooms, otherwise known as Pleurotus eryngii. And to be honest, I don't know why it has that name, king oyster mushroom, but I guess they do look kind of stately and kingly and they have a lot of presence. Now, king oyster mushrooms are a lot different from the previous oyster mushrooms that I've already talked about. First of all, they don't typically grow in clusters, they grow singly. And they don't typically have that shelf-like shape either unless they're kind of forced to grow that way. Now, when you see king oyster mushrooms at the grocery store, you'll see that they have super, almost comically fat stems and tiny little caps. And actually they're grown that way on purpose. They're grown in low oxygen, low light environments, which causes them to have those fat stems and those tiny little caps. But they also have a super long shelf life that way, which is why you can often find them at your local grocery store and they can be grown overseas and shipped uh, wherever because they can last you know, two weeks or more after harvest. But if they're grown with more fresh air, specifically if you grow them outside, they can look completely different. And if you looked at them side by side, you might not even think that they're the same species because when they're grown outside, they'll have much bigger caps, they'll have darker caps and uh, smaller stems. But they still are you know, a meaty mushroom and they're pretty awesome to eat. And they're the one mushroom you can actually even just slice it up and put it on the barbecue because the stems of king oyster mushrooms are actually pretty enjoyable and pretty edible uh, when you compare them to like the chewier stems 
of something like a blue oyster mushroom. Now, if you're growing king oyster mushrooms, one of the things that's kind of special about this one is, in my experience anyways, they benefit from a casing layer, which is basically just a thin layer of non-nutritious material or non-nutritious substrate that you put on top of the fruiting block, and then that keeps the mushrooms kind of moist underneath and will help them to fruit and form nice uh, large fruits. But you don't need a casing layer. Lots of people grow them without them. You can even grow king oyster mushrooms in bottles, or I've even seen them in straw logs, but they do, in my experience, benefit from a casing layer, so it's a slightly different growing experience if you want to try that at home. Now before we leave king oysters, there's one other mushroom that's kind of a hybrid, which is pretty cool, and it's called the black pearl king oyster mushroom. And I'm pretty sure this is just a hybrid between normal uh, pearl oyster mushrooms and king oyster mushrooms. And they look really cool. I've only actually grown them once, and I grew them on PF cakes, which is like not the best way at all to grow oyster mushrooms. It was just kind of a fun project. Um, but yeah, black pearl king oyster mushrooms, like I said, they're kind of right in between oyster mushrooms and king oyster mushrooms, and they're really unique and they taste great and they look cool. So if you're trying to grow king oyster mushrooms or oyster mushrooms, uh, this might be a great place to start because it's kind of a fun project. And I haven't seen a ton of people growing them, but they are super fun to grow. Next up is the pearl oyster mushroom, or just called the oyster mushroom. This is the archetypal oyster mushroom, or Pleurotus ostriatus, and this is actually one of the most commonly cultivated mushrooms in the whole world. Pearl oyster mushrooms grow fast, they fruit heavily, they're delicious, so you can see why it's such a great candidate for cultivation. The shelf life for these mushrooms is pretty decent. It's better than something like a pink oyster or a yellow oyster, which like I said, degrade really fast, but it might not be as great as something like a king oyster mushrooms, which again is why if you're shopping for just oyster mushrooms at your grocery store, a lot of times they don't look that great. Um, that's not because they're bad quality or anything. That's just because they're delicate and they don't handle very well and they don't have a great shelf life. Now, aside from the fresh air requirement or the oyster mushrooms needing a lot of fresh air, pearl oyster mushrooms are actually a great candidate for beginning mushroom growers, which which is why if you get a mushroom kit, a lot of the times it will be pearl oyster mushrooms or Pleurotus ostriatus. For example, like the Back to the Roots kit, which I know is a really popular one, um, that one is pearl oyster mushroom and it works great for beginners. Now, I think there is some confusion with the name pearl oyster mushroom, which I guess just kind of you know, highlights the issue with some of these common names because I think a lot of people when they think about pearl oyster mushrooms, or pearl oysters, are thinking of like the whitish cream colored variety of oyster mushrooms, which is not necessarily the case with pearl oysters. But I guess all that really means is if you want to grow a specific species, just make sure that whoever you're getting your spawn from or your culture from, make sure you actually read what type of mushroom you're actually getting. Because I've seen buying pearl oyster mushrooms and some people get like blue oysters and some people get these cream colored oysters. So it can really depend. But in general, pearl oyster mushroom is just the traditional Pleurotus ostriatus, which is kind of a gray oyster mushroom um, that you know shares a lot of the same characteristics as these other ones, but is just a really great candidate for growing at home. Another good example of this naming issue is something like the elm oyster mushroom, because a lot of people will grow elm oysters, but Elm oysters are Hypsizygus ulmarius. Again, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. These are kind of things like I always read. I don't really hear people saying. So anyways, the, the typical elm oyster mushroom is Hypsizygus ulmarius, which actually isn't a Pleurotus species, but you can also buy elm oyster mushroom, which is just a variety of Pleurotus ostriatus. And it's actually a really great mushroom to grow. I think it's called elm A is the variety. And it has some really great characteristics where it doesn't need as much fresh air and it's super easy to grow and it's tasty and all these wonderful things. But um, there is a little bit of confusion between elm oysters if it is actually hypsizygus or hypsizygus. Hypsizygus? I don't know, you decide. Uh, hypsizygus or actual Pleurotus ostriatus. And finally, I wanna talk about Pleurotus populinus. And the reason I wanna highlight this one is because this is the mushroom that grows locally where I live. And it's you know often a great place to start if you wanna grow oyster mushrooms or enjoy oyster mushrooms. It might be worth it to find out like what variety of oyster grows in your area. Number one, it will likely make it easier for you to grow because if it grows in your area, you probably have the right conditions to kind of easily grow it outside. And also it's just interesting to see kind of what types of oyster mushrooms are growing in your area. Now, Pleurotus populinus typically grows on aspirin and I did actually try to clone it once, uh, which basically just means that you take the mushroom fruiting body, you open it up, you tear out a little piece of the fruiting body, you put it on an agar dish, you grow that out, you make grain spawn, and then you grow mushrooms like you would any other type of mushroom. And the results were not that great. It was still a pretty fun project to take something from the wild and then you know culture it and eventually cultivate it indoors. But it just goes to show that you know these commercial mushroom strains have been developed over time to produce like really great fruits. 
and all these really amazing characteristics for cultivation. Whereas if you just go and snag a uh, wild mushroom and try to cultivate it, typically you're not gonna get amazing results, but it could still be a really fun project. So anyways, Pleurotus populinus, find it here in the wild and it is delicious and awesome to eat, but it might not be the best mushroom to grow. So that's it. I mean, there are a bunch of different varieties and species of oyster mushrooms, but those are kind of the main ones that you might be looking at if you're deciding what you want to grow or what mushrooms you just might want to go try and buy from somebody else and eat. Um, but yeah, oyster mushrooms in general, they're a super awesome mushroom to grow at home because they are really tenacious. They are fast growing. Uh, they do produce huge bounties. The only thing that is a bit of a pain is that they need a lot of fresh air. So as long as you can figure out a way to make sure they don't starve on the fresh air or get drowned out by too much carbon dioxide, then you're gonna have a good time trying to grow oyster mushrooms. But I wanna know what are your favorite oyster mushrooms, either favorite oyster mushrooms to eat or just favorite oyster mushrooms to grow, or if you think I missed anything about oyster mushrooms that I probably should have talked about. So let me know in the comments below. And uh, yeah, until next time, thanks for watching. I'm Tony from freshcap.com and we'll see you in the next video.